the waterless deserts of the tropics, hundreds of square miles of baking sand. The earth can be an inhospitable place, yet birds of some kind manage somehow to endure and survive all its privations. Indeed, there is scarcely a corner of the globe that birds have not colonized. Sand grouse live in the sandy deserts of Africa, as barren a landscape as you can imagine. Yet hidden in these sands are tiny seeds. They were shed by plants months or years ago after a storm briefly dampened the desert. The sand grouse, by searching incessantly, manage to pick out several thousand every day. But they have to drink. Water holes are few and far between in this desert, and some birds may have to fly for as much as 50 miles before they find one. And when they get there, all it is is a little puddle like this one in front of me. After such a long flight, their thirst is huge. But some must do more than satisfy their own needs. They have left behind them away in the desert, their newly hatched chicks. Chicks can't fly, but they too must have water. And the males will take it to them. They can't carry it in their crops. They'll need all that water to sustain themselves. But they have extra tanks. Their breast feathers have a special adaptation. They're covered on their inner sides with a mat of filaments so fine that they absorb water like blotting paper. And then they're off again on the long return flight. A female is waiting for her mate. It's roastingly hot, and with her are her chicks. Here he comes, and the female makes way for him. While the last chick struggles from its shell, the others cluster around and suck from his breast. For all the world, like puppies or kittens. So one comparatively small adaptation of its feathers has enabled the sand grouse to colonize a corner of the world closed to others.